started. Forty pounds sandwiches and beers. Very expensive, eh? Cheers. What are you watching? Is it football? Yeah. Yes. Who are you supporting? France. Are you French? Okay, we're off to get some provisions for the beginning of our fishing trip here in Alta Fjord. This is not quite right. This is weird. Yeah. We've arrived in Storkosnes, which is not how it should be pronounced. How should it be pronounced, please? Story Koshness. I have to watch my English now. I'm on a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we thought you were the type. Yes, the boat are here. The latest news with fishing is around this area. Okay, so up on that headland, yeah. Yes. And also here you can see there's little water. Mm-hmm. Been a lots of big cod, big salux. Salux is uh... Coldfish. Coldfish, yes. Yeah. Coldfish. And also there's a stick. Yeah. Don't go between the stick and the shore. Or keep outside, but really good halibut place. And always slowly in and out the harbor. You don't go to near the shore because there's some rocks falling down and you can... So I usually just go back to the end inside this. We will be seizing all of these days. <laughs> well, it's not showing any fish yet. No, thinking, thinking where the fish are. Yeah. <laughs> das Boot. English, do you yeah. want English? Yes, I think. US, no. UK. UK. Yeah. Well, here we are, first night here in Storkorsnes, which is not pronounced like that, but we're not going to learn it in time by the end of the week. And we're going to go out in the boat tomorrow. But tonight, we're going to experiment with fishing from the shore. Because apparently this point in front of us has got a whole host of interesting fish off it. Tide should be coming in now. Dried cod. I like a bit of that. And God help what that was. Is that 300 kilometers in the Arctic Circle. You found some German ordnance. <laughs> I like this. I found a, a Viking uh, tramps hut. Brilliant it is as well. Excellent stove. The trip begins. First fish of the holiday. Little codling. Straight out the Arctic. Alta Fjord. Here you go. Carl, what's it saying? Nice, great fish. That's about five pounds. So, day two in Store Korsnes. Callum on the Wi-Fi. It looks like it's a beautiful day today. It's particularly on the water, which looks very flat, but look at that sky and those mountains. Outstanding. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Breaking the sheet made each light. Oh. <laughs> Making uh, uh, leader kits. Uh, we've got braided line here of about 70 pounds. Then a knot through to uh, a suffix leader, which has got some very strong braid. And then 80 pound monofilament. And the reason why we have the monofilament is the monofilament is stretchy, as you can feel it there, it actually moves a bit. So basically if a, if a large fish is to take um, a lure like this that's attached to the end of the line, if it was just braid here, which is, does not stretch, it would probably not stay in the fish's mouth. So we've got these kits that give a bit of stretch so um, we can absorb the shock of a big fish. Um, so. Callum's making breakfast, the rigs are done, and soon we'll be heading out. But this, the greatest thing about being up here is there's absolutely no uh, time concerns because it's 24 hour daylight, so we can fish round the clock if we want. 
It's quite hard to believe, but this uh, is actually <laughs> going to be a lure for today. It's called a herring cut bait. Has quite exceptional design. It's made of, I suppose, some form of plastic rubber, but it's almost three-dimensional uh, in its design. It's got about a centimetre of see-through material before you get to the flesh. Lovely colouring underneath. So, we'll see if this uh, performs. Yeah. Loading up the rods. All different types we've got for small fish, for bait, and uh, obviously rigs for the halibut. And the cod, the armory. Nice. Just cut yeah. the ray on the helm. First day out. We're going about the speed of a mouse because uh, we've got to get used to the equipment. Oh, Carl. Carl's in. He's been searching a bit on the boat for a while. Chasing uh, uh, Arctic terns with diving for bait balls. Been out about an hour now. Card. Card. Here it comes. Okay. How long board it is. Nice fish motor, Carl. They're quite hard to find, but we're looking for puffins diving in the water. Carl's got a jig head here with a, with a soft plastic. Obviously, this uh, cod enjoyed that. And uh, that'll be tonight's sea. Right, this is the start of uh, Mark reeling in a big fish. Get in, Mark. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, 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 oh. There you go, Mark. Our first halibut. Fantastic. <laughs> halibut, Brian. Is it halibut? Oh, it's a good halibut as well. <laughs> okay, Fraser. It's a nice one. It's a very nice one. In the mouth if you can. Yeah, just a neck come up through. Well done, Callum. That's what we're talking about. Arctic cod fishing. Well done, Fraser. We have a full house on the first day with a good sized wolf fish there. Right, Mr. Wolfie, come here. Okay, just calm down, all right? That's a full house today then, chaps. It is. 14 pound cod, 10 pound wolf fish, 14 pound halibut. Job well done. Let's have a quick look inside. Yes. Arctic pigeons. Wolfish, songs, head. They have extremely good cheeks. That's the, the best part of these. Uh, also, cod as well, cod cheeks. Halibut cheeks and wolfish cheeks. I think they're going to make a little delicacy out of that. And there you have a wolfish fillet. Look at that meat. Okay, so this is Callum's halibut. What did we say? Was it 14, 15 pounds? Nicely done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the line here. There should be one side. That's the back one. There we have a beautiful Arctic halibut fillet. Enough to feed, I imagine, for four people there. A, a wolf, this is a wolfish cheek, which is some of the firmest muscle. It actually feels like it's still got bone in it, but it hasn't. It's just the muscle is so firm, and this is the muscle that would uh, be used to drive to drive the jaws down. We just looked at there, it's in the cheeks and the side, and it drives these very strong uh, teeth down on shells and what have you. And uh, you do not want to mess with one of those getting a hold of your hand because I think it would make your hand about a centimetre thick. <laughs> Fraser in control. Just. <laughs> it's a good job we weren't filming a few minutes ago. I'm pleased I got me rod tips. Fish finder showing herring on the surface there. That's in red. About 50 metres. That looks, pr looks pretty fishy. And uh, we're trying to work out 
where the marks are and where to drop our lines. That's what you call a very large shoal of fish. Actually individually picked out. Superb. So we're gonna drift over that, see what happens. Where's your mama at? We're back at it again. Let's get the world of all things you want. Fjord, herring under pressure from the cod, and we've come to join the party. I've taken to a bit of coley bashing with some daylight, and it's been a 100% success rate so far. Three at a time. Six o'clock in the morning now, and full tide is approaching. We came out at this time in the morning because uh, it's a good part of the tide to fish. We're all using perks and there's fish everywhere and we're hitting them. Fraser's into a good one. He's working it up from 75 meters. There you go, now you can see the fish on the fish finder. Chill. It's a monster cod. <laughs> Not happy. That's the right side to show. I think that is the biggest cod we've ever seen live, me old China. Well done. Fraser Ventus, and I think what I would call a fish that's probably easily over 20 pounds. And I'm afraid it's a keeper because of the state, but well done. Woo! Arctic cod in the area. Oh, oh, <laughs> he just kicked me in the nuts. Pound, three ounces. And I'm going to deal with the cod here. A lot of good, good flesh in this one. Coming down the spine. There you have prime cod fillet. They're the cod cheeks. Many claim are the tastiest part of a cod. Lovely, lovely stuff. So, on the barbecue tonight, we think. I was trying to show you the teeth before. It's a lot easier to see the teeth here. A cod's teeth. Can you imagine this is a 17 pound cod's teeth. You can imagine what it would be like once they get to four times the size of that. How did it go, chaps? Lovely. Was there any uh, discussion about the eggs and butter? Yes, well, yes, we, uh, we left them there. We picked them up and we left them on the side. We didn't pay for them. Oh, we didn't pay for them? English fools. <laughs> I don't like beer. <laughs> and that you want us to believe? Yeah. <laughs> I can see the normal light. Yeah, do you know I'd love to come, love to come in the winter and see it. Is it quite uh, strong up here? Yes, it is. Brilliant. If you are lucky with the weather, you can it's playing around, but the sky is everywhere. Yeah. The stars and the moon, you can sit watch for hours. 
I bet. I'm a, I bet it's an amazing experience. So maybe someday when we get warm enough, gloves will come for some winter fishing. I have, I have clothes for you. You don't have to fish. Yeah. You can come with me and uh, you can take a snowmobile and we can go upside here and for a short trip or something. Brilliant. Excellent, Albert. So eating everything, I think. That's why he's so old. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and you know, he's in good shape. Yes, he's, good he's got some muscle there. That's a secret haddock stash cupboard. That's the right. haddock stash, yeah. Don't tell anybody about my haddock. So this is dried haddock. This is dried haddock, yes. Could you want to film me trying some of this? Yeah, sure. Come on. Oh, it's, it's good, it's good. This is going to be my breakfast, you know. Do you know, um, I we have this... Um, is this salted when it's dried? No. No, only, so this is only just washed in salt water. Only washed only in salt water. water. Right, okay, so this is dried haddock. Dried last year's haddock. This year's. This year's haddock. This year. Okay. I like it. Alright, then we've got Fraser's big cod here, nice big fillet, and uh, we're going to use some Caribbean lemon pepper. I've never done this before, so it's going to be interesting, but we're going to marinate the fish fillet in this perhaps for a day or two. I think it's only supposed to be a few hours. I get this all on there. We can rub it in. I probably should add some oil. Now what we're going to do later is we're going to barbecue this and uh, have a lovely outdoor fish barbecue, Jamaican style, here in the Arctic Circle. There we go, fighting away. Got a hundred meters to bring it up through though. Traces into a, another punishing fish. Two nice cod, double figure, Fraser, that was yours I think. Well done fella. Okay, two cod. That's how we like to do. You in Carl? Well done. We're sitting on a big shoal. I've got to be honest, folks, it's mayhem. Double figure cod, every drop. Well done, Carl. We're on a shoal of 20 plus pound cod. It's like going to the gym. It doesn't even look like fish. It looks like British Telecom. The cod matrix. Here you are, still back in the game. Must be about what, 40, 50 cod in the game now? Yeah, all over 15 pounds. Quite a few on the 20 mark. Well, I reckon he's, uh, he's in the biggest one yet. There you go. Hands caught in his teeth. Really sore, isn't it? You've got to get, you can't go into the gills, can you? Actually, into in beside him. Okay, lovely Arctic cod. Here oh. we go. That's what we're uh, dropping our lines to, into at the moment. I hope it doesn't make you feel seasick if you're watching this. But that is uh, the amount of fish that are under us. Earlier it was black because I think there's probably hardly any water left. It's just 98% fish. Measuring it on how much it hurts us now because that's what we've just been bringing in. We've let about uh, 30 of those go small. Yeah, it's only 15 pounds. Day four's turned out to be an absolute belter. And this morning we're going to go into Alta, which is the nearest main town here. And we're going to go and see some 6,000 year old etchings. There's Alan and Albert calling us over before we go on our trip to Alta. Nice, nice vehicle. Hi. I'm talking back. My goodness. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Forty pounds, thirty pounds, I don't know. 
Oh. I think that would fight more than a cod. 150 years ago, they used to blow it up and then get the women to carry it down in the winter on sleds. A ski house toilet. Ski house toilet. <laughs> I've come up from Alta. I'm about to see the biggest northern European canyon. Behind these trees is the one of the most expensive salmon rivers in the world. 15,000 pounds for a week. I'm living in Oslo and yes. I pay you 100,000 and I go fishing with you. Yes. You know? Yes. Then my name has to be on your card. Yes. So of course you can do it. Yes. If, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, you, can, you can only do it in so, one. So, okay, so if you win a card, so if you win a card, that's just for you. Exactly. You can't take a guest, you can't take a I can. I can take all the guests and all the friends I, I, I want. We go with the whole family and friends. With On your ticket? Yes, on my ticket. Everybody yeah. can fish, but they have to be from Alta. Here we go, into the hydroelectric dam. I think the devil lives in here. You never know. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be just the salmon getting a shock if it broke. <laughs> you better sleep with your swimsuit on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the Sami people, yes? Yes. Now, are they similar to Laplanders? Yes. Okay. That's This is a maelstrom. Now, it goes straight on to a market which increasingly recognizes the value of green. This is the Duke of Westminster's fishing rod from over a hundred years ago and it's from Annick in Northumberland where Fraser and I come from or close to. You can see they used to make fishing rods entirely out of well, wood. It's beautifully made though, all the brass fittings. Some of the world's oldest rock art with some humping elk. Must have been drunk when he did that one. And there we go, that's what we came for. I think that's the world's first MacBook Pro keyboard. There's Big George swinging his tackle while he knocks out an elk. Hello. To the fillet house. Oh wow, he did a very good job. Yeah, that's his good. Yeah, excellent. Very, very good. That's good. That's his good. Yeah. Excellent. Yours. Ich? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's yes. what you expect them to also. We also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Kostas. No. No, yours. Ah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for living in such a beautiful place and allowing us to fish. Right. Lock and pocket. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, vacuum pack, yeah. Let's have a look at some of the lures we've been using. So we've been taking most of the cod on the big perks here. This is a little bit of a fantasy of mine. That's a small marlin lure, but we haven't got to use that yet, but we shall try later on today with an assist hook. That's a her savage herring cut bait. This is extremely good for halibut because when it's bouncing along the bottom like this, the hook isn't going to catch into the ground, which would make you lose it. And these things are about 12 quid each, so they're worth saving for sure. Some crazy disco outfits over here. And then there's a little baby flatfish, which we're hoping will bring something out. God knows what that would be in the real world, a white eel I suppose, and these are just to replace any problems we have with the cup baits, new plastics. 
braid to mono, very important out here because of the size of the fish. Wet the braid so that it moves against itself. Very, very strong line. Okay, so I've got a loop there between my thumb and forefinger. I go over five times. Six if you want to make room for error. Come back with the other loop. And then slowly but surely I've got to try and make this all make sense. I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier doing this on land than it is on a bouncy boat, which I've been having to do the last few days. So I've got this loop now and here's the rig body, 80 pounds braking strain. I'm going to hold the loop that I've got and then it has something in similarity to a, a blood knot so I wrap the, the mono around the braid. I'm going to go 12 times. Come on, behave. You can see I'll clip these little tags off and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we're getting to ride in Albert and Allen's James Bond speedboat. We're going to go and see a glacier. Maybe drop a line or two. You know us. Glacier hunting we go. GPS on the James Bond boat. It's like we're in a cartoon. Amazing. There we are. Yeah. We're approaching a glacier here. We got up to it closely as we go around the corner, but this is just the beginning of it. There's a sea eagle attacking birds there. It's the big one. Take it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the size of that bird. Sea eagle. Just been attacking the birds there. Gonna get that one. Oh! Hunting just like we were for the fish. down here, we've already had something on for a ride. Oh, and there we go again. This time hopefully it'll stay on. Let's see down there. Oh. Surrounded by beauty. Eagles. Well, that he has been uh, chopping the cod up so we can attract uh, the sea eagles. And uh, what do you believe inside their tummies? We have a baby halibut a shrimp and what seems to be lots of very small sand eels or something. It's amazing because these grow up, this is uh, probably half an ounce or something that can get to 300 kilograms. We had a lot of bird activity here. I'll try my trusty kiwi bird. So maybe go to the box first, then come up.
Beautiful. Thank you, Albert. Oops, I've caught you. <laughs> Excellent. May the salmon gods be on our side. Yes. Fifteen pound cod. Lemon peppered up, which I've never cooked with before, so it's all a bit of an experiment. So, gentlemen, step forth. Okay. Marks into a monster cod. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, colour showing, colour show, showing. Color Look showing. at the size of this blighter. What a beastie. Oh, there's a beast okay. as well. I've got the gaff. No, I'll, be, I'll let me see if I can do this. It's not, I'll see how he's hooked. Um, I'm going to do it old school style. Let's see if I can pull this off. Oh, it's getting it. Oh, what a beauty. Look at that monster. Ah. That has to be, that's the biggest of the trip. Do you think so? Definitely. Oh, that is the biggest of the trip. It has to be a keeper, surely. <laughs> nah, no, nope. put him back. He's actually got. I've got to stand back to get him in the picture. <laughs> there we go. Arctic cod. Off we go. Oh, no, he's got there a Teeth. And that's what a wolfish does to a treble hook. The fjord is like a mill pond tonight. With rays of light coming down. This is herring jumping out of the water because they're being attacked from below. Unfortunately, it's behind us. Bait fish, the odd one on the bottom. We've got some bait out for wolf fish. We've been successful once with that. Just clicking away when there's a bite. Nice noise, like jaws. The ratchet. Hello. Das ist dein Wolffischenheimer. Bait fish are in green. You can see the bigger ones. And those are our lines going down to the bottom. big stonking cod and uh, I've got a herring cup bait on there and this cod has taken it all the way in like the big beast that he is so I'm going to try and get him under the gills if I've got the strength in my left arm after these four days of reeling fish don't bite me He goes. You see how fast he went down? He's, take, he's taking the foreskin off me lure. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, that noise in the distance is it? A herring disco. The cod weren't invited, but they've broken their way in. Fraser and I being followed by halibut. There we go. doing here is going up to the remains of a German gun emplacement. 
because this fjord was used by the German Navy in World War II to come out and attack British ships in the Bering Sea that were delivering supplies to the Russians in the port of Archangel. So you can find that uh, graffiti. Must have been a huge gun. Yeah, the world's first record player into a former Nazi hole. Just taking part in a modicum of organic desecration of the Nazi gun emplacement. And now I've climbed through into one. Really quite incredible. Here we have the barracks. I think the lads might have found something. Armour piercing shell damage. Makes you realise the force. Someone was a good shot. Field of wild onions grows on the site. It's a purple passchendaele. I think someone would have used the iron. Very well made, as we've come to expect. Just trolling the salmon here. For the last few days of our holiday, we're allowed to catch them in the fjord. Once they're in the river though, that's a different kettle of fish, so we're taking this opportunity. We had no idea you could do that up here, but we've seen salmon, huge salmon caught in the nets. That's something you'll not see very often, that's a pelagic marlin lure on top of my uh, herring cod bait. And that's uh, the size of the cod we've got below us after that bird, after those birds, that's probably... I don't know, he's looking pretty big, that one, chat. You've left your dinner behind, mate. Excellently done. Don't let it get you down. It's gonna well done, be fella. Right. Yeah, again. Here we go, here we go. Oh, you're gonna take it. You're gonna take it. Go on, take it. Yes, here we go. Come on. Yeah, he's a halibut because he's messing you about. It shows you what delicate things it can be for such a few things. Norwegian fish disc The clouds here in the Arctic are amazing. It's got cotton wool bud. Mushroom cloud. Hey, hey you. Hey, this spine is butter. I want to, want to. Having a good time with you. Floating spiders.